happening. But I want, I want to talk about church and the culture, culture and the church. Continue on that series, culture and the church, culture and the church. Uh, just a reference uh, um, in the book of John, I want to say this before I go any further, that John was very skillful in how he approached knowledge. And the first thing he did was ask Jesus. He said, Lord, we know not whither thou goest. And how can we know the way? And th there, was a, there, there is a big lesson there, big lesson. And the lesson is simple, but it's huge. It's asking questions. Whenever you go into a institution, a church, a job, uh, wherever you go, there has the first step. One of the first things that you want to embark on is asking questions. Because, you know, it's, it's, it's a humble thing to ask questions. Questions will open doors for you. Questions are signs of uh, humility. I've said this before, for those of you who have been following me through the years, it's a sign of humility. Um, I know most of us have seen people start a job, come to a church or whatever institution and don't ask questions. They continue spinning their wheels until one day they realize that they're missing the key ingredient of what it takes to be successful in that place. And so it's important that we, we come to that first place of humility where we ask, okay, how do we do things around here? Because now you're talking about culture. Culture is, is, is defined as the way we do things in this place. Hallelujah. And so, and so the first step, uh, you, see, you see, open fire is not an ordinary religious church. It is a church that prepares you not only spiritually, but prepare you for life. That when you leave out of these doors, not only you can represent Christ uh, by his word, but also in action. Hallelujah. There are some practical things that we ought to learn, even as a child of God, just as much as we're learning the word of God. And these things are called principles. Principles of the kingdom, principles of the spirit, principles of how we conduct ourselves. Amen. And so, and so it's imperative that we take away these key ingredients. This message today is not a message where we have all the theological, uh, all, all, all everything, all the lines crossed and T's dotted or how to present a sermon. It is a message of things that we can use and take away from and apply to our lives. Amen. And so I was, I was, I was walking to the, uh, the plane on yesterday coming from El Paso and I called Bishop Roberts and we're having a conversation and one of the things he mentioned was was the pilot and the passenger but I don't think he realized that I was actually getting on my way to get in the plane so while he was talking to me the Lord started showing me some revelation and one of the things that I, I, I got out of the conversation is this minister pink is that the pilot is in the cockpit with the co-pilot and i don't i've never gone to the pilot to ask him how did i get from el paso to austin in the process of that flight he had this flight plan mapped out but during the course of flight there sometimes he had to do some adjustments without consulting the passengers i don't believe anybody in here have the boldness to walk up to the pilot's door knock and say what's going on what's the temperature what's uh, how what is the knots and they what they call those knots and uh, uh, radars i don't you don't even know what to ask but but all you know you get in the plane fall asleep like me and, and, and I woke up when, the, when the, thing, the, the wheel hit the ground. But during that process, 
there is several different adjustments that has to be made during the flight. So, 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 so what I'm trying to say is sometimes God will be changing some things up. While we seem like we're getting to where we go the way we need to be. But God has to make certain adjustment that even if he try to explain to you the knots that he had to shift and the degrees that he had to shift, you won't even understand how to interpret the information that you're getting. Oh, come on, somebody. Oh, uh, And so sometimes you just got to sit back and say, God, be God. You're in the cockpit and if wherever you're taking, I just know the plane is going to land. Oh, somebody ought to give God praise. You just got to know that God is faithful. And so, ah, uh, God have a way to just remind you of his faithfulness. I was in prayer this week. In the last two weeks, the last three weeks, last month, I was praying about some specific things. Because sometimes, I want you to see something. In the cockpit, it's not space for a crowd. Sometimes, it's me and Jesus. Sometimes, me and First Lady. And that's it. In the cockpit, there is not room for spectators. There is not room for opinions because there is a particular way and information that even if the, the pilot explained it to you, you will not understand. Pastor, where are you going? Where are you doing? God, where are you taking me? And God is trying to say, I, if, if I explain it to you, you won't understand. Oh... God, why am I going through this? Why is this happening? Why am I, why do we, why, why pastor preaching about this? Why is this happening? I'm not saying for us to be ignorant. I'm not saying for us to just sit and let persons take us to where they want to take us based on their personal opinions. Paul, the instruction, the principle of the kingdom is follow as we follow Christ. And if you're not following Christ, uh, Ah, the first question, the reason why, the reason why they ask you to scan your boarding pass is to confirm that you're on the right flight. And so the, once they confirm you're on the right flight, I don't worry about where the pilot's taking me. I know I'm on the right plane. Come on, y'all not hear what I'm saying. I'm trying to talk to somebody here this morning. Oh, I, I, don't, know, I don't know why I'm going here, but I, I just want to give somebody this revelation. God is saying, trust me with the process. And so I, I, I just walk up to the, I was checking in Pastor Johnson. Checking in, praying, checking into the airport. And this guy out of the blue, out of the blue, just walk up to me and he says, God is faithful. You don't expect to see a Christian. I mean, it's almost like you don't expect to see somebody talking like that at the check-in point. Caught me off guard. Because I'm like, ah, oh, wait a minute. Ah, this guy don't know me. I look like a regular passenger. I don't look like a pastor or nothing like that. There's nothing about me that says that he need to speak to me like that. And he said to me, God is faithful. And he said, you know how, you know how, you know how uh, 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 you can prove that he's faithful because he's always been faithful. And when he said that, I'm saying, oh, okay now. So I, I stopped seeing him as just a man standing there trying to check me in. I see, I started to see him as a messenger from God. And so a moment, come on, y'all, the moment he started to speak my language, he catch my attention. Oh, The moment he started to speak my language, because if he started to say something else, I would not be interested. But the moment he said, God is faithful, he came right up my alley. Right about what God, I've been praying about. I said, God, thank you. And the moment he keeps saying, he keeps talking, he said, God has proven himself over and over. And God is always faithful. He wasn't even trying to prophesy to me. He was just speaking something straight up my lane. And I caught the language and said, God, thank you. And the moment I walked off, man of God, I walk around the corner. I broke down crying like a baby. 
my mind, I just start crying. I said, God, you, you, are you serious? You just, you just do me like that right there? I said, God, you just know how to just touch me and touch us at the right point, right, the right place. Come on, when I don't even expect that encouragement. Come on, I'm talking to somebody this morning. I'm just here to hey, I encourage somebody this morning. Huh? That you might think that God don't know what you're dealing with. Or he hasn't heard your prayer. But, but, but there's somebody God will send in your way to remind you that he heard you. Oh, somebody ought to be excited this morning. Because if he, he, he's a God I know that answers prayer. That's a whole lot to shout about. Amen. I, I, I'm encouraged. I'm encouraged. And we're still talking about culture and the church. And so, and so questions are very important. Keeps you humble. One of the signs of a person that is proud is that they don't ask questions. Don't ask questions. Uh, culture is something that uh, will bring you in and push you out and so i want to i want to talk to you a little bit about building 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 because as we talk about building culture sometimes has to be built huh it has to be built it has to be built it's something has to be work on um in the in the building process when things are in the baby stage you tend to build by what I call trial and error. How many of us started something with just do, trial and error? You miss, hit and miss, hit and miss. No real thought about it, but you just know something is there and you work in it. Amen? So build by trial and error. And as you grow a little bit more mature, you start to use instinct and inspiration we've had a whole lot of inspired services come and you feel good you're inspired just know you need to be a church instinct until one day you realize that inspiration is not equivalent to maturation oh i feel i feel something right there that mean the pastor a sweet message is not going to do it no more uh, the, the praise team uh, how things sound or how by environment these things is not doing it it's not enough anymore it used to be good when i was a little baby when i was uh, i was just trying things i get everything i try it it doesn't work i put it aside i take what i, I can use i put what i can't use but there comes a time when you 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 just want to your desire to hit the target on a more consistent basis and that's what i'm talking about when maturity start to happen you don't you don't want to miss more than you with your you're hitting in Oh, I don't know what I'm talking because it comes a time now where, where time, your time in, in, in church, your time serving God, your time on the job, it starts to become more valuable. Uh, I don't know what I'm talking to. Uh, it, it, it's the place of growth and transition where you, you come to the realization that I can't just try being a Christian anymore. I can't just try to sing anymore. I can't just try to shout anymore. My shout has to mean something. My dance has to mean something. You, have, you come to a point that I can't just do it just because it looked good and it inspired me. Come on. It has to mean something. Oh, God, she come out. Uh, and so during the building of your faith, during the building, when God is building you, there comes a time when, when a good sweet song can't just inspire you anymore. I need more than that. I, I need more than that. It's the place that you that you come to the realization that 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 that, 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 that there's not the only that no, I can be inspired. I like to be inspired, but 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 sometimes they're gonna cost some work to be done, some sweat, some time spent in the building process, We're building culture. We're building culture, and, and so you try this, you try that. I'm I'm, I'm telling y'all a story. I'm telling you all a story. I'm telling you all a nine-year testimony. 
Oh, I'm telling you something that you might not, you weren't here to hear it, but I'm trying to share something with you that you understand, my God, uh, what God has been doing, what he is doing, and what he's about to do. Oh, God Almighty. I've seen the stages in my, with my own two eyes. I've seen the stages in my own life uh, where I said, I can't just come up here and preach just because I'm trying to be charismatic and try to inspire. Because I've seen where people will leave out of one of the most powerful service I preach and still go back to what they were doing before. I'm trying to be nice here. I don't want to get too uh, out there this morning. Uh, but I'm saying that that doesn't change somebody anymore oh god almighty when the enemy hits something really hit in your life you gotta you start taking church seriously yes oh god when they it's when the boss said look you're on your last week of uh, notice that's when you start taking the job seriously come on when the enemy come in like a flood and hit your family you you say god the spirit of god has to raise up against the enemy this morning somebody need to bless god in this place and so a little more, a little more, we you start to build not by inspiration or, or by instinct, but by, 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 by knowledge and intuition. Knowledge. You start to seek more knowledge as to why we raise our hands. Why we come to church. Why, why we're talking about culture. Why we're talking about these things. You start to ask questions. Hallelujah. And as we go through the process, as we get to that place of more maturation, we realize that it's not trial and error that builds a house. It is not inspiration that builds the house. But it's built through wisdom. Proverbs 23, 2, 3, 4 said, through wisdom, a house is built. So the question is, what is wisdom? Wisdom is now the application of, of information that we understand. So you got to get the knowledge, you get understanding, and now you, you applying, applying yourself based on the information that you understand. If you don't understand the information, how can you apply something that you don't understand? And so this is why culture is so important. You have to understand what culture is. So you can apply it. Oh. And, 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 so, and, so, and so this is the gist of this whole, we, we can't, we, we, we don't want to, uh, we've got to get away from just coming and doing things without intentionality or being strategic. Because God, every house, there's a do order. Before, before, before I get there, I, 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 I want to say this. That when you reach a stage of maturity, that place where you, you stop shouting just because everybody's shouting. Y'all got it, right? Where, where you're kind of serious about your Christian walk now. You, you, you're listening more. You're taking notes. And you, you're going back over stuff when you say, look, I'm serious about this thing because I'm not just doing this anymore. Because obviously everything I was doing before didn't, didn't help me out. I, I, I can't just come to church on a Sunday morning anymore and go through the motions and think that uh, uh, you know within yourself that's, that, that's not good enough. And something in you said, look, I got I to gotta do more than that. Because I find myself in the same place every Sunday after Sunday. And now, obviously, if I don't do something or God don't do something, nothing is going to change. Because it's not that the pastor is not preaching to me. It's not that I'm not getting word, but it, something is not changing. Why? Because it's either I'm not applying myself. Oh God, shaka masanda. And so I realize that now in this stage you have you be you be you're more strategic. You're more strategic. You're you're moving by design. God lay out the pattern in the skies. If you look out there, you will see how the, the earth and the, 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 the universe as a have a pattern. 
Stars, if you look carefully, you'll see patterns. Sometimes I look up there in the clouds, I see hands, I see faces, I see things. There are patterns all over the place. And so I realize that God loves, he's an artist. And he, he paints pictures. And if you look good enough, you'll get the picture. <laughs> Do you get the picture? Do you get the picture? Or you're caught up in the process? Did, did you, do you get the picture? Do you, um, do you, do you, do you see the whole, the, 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 what God is, the whole of the, what God is trying to do? Or are you just looking at the process? Do you get the picture? Why, why am I dealing with this? Do you get the picture? Do you know why? Oh God Almighty, I feel some, I feel a midday motivation coming out of this right here. I, I, I got to lay it good so he get it good. Do you get the picture? Oh, my God Almighty. <laughs> and sometimes we are so bottled down in the process and bottled down in what's going on, but don't I miss the picture. Why am I here? Why am I doing this? Why am I going through this? Why? Because God is a God of pattern. And, he, and, and, he, and it's so far back as the day of Moses. He said, Moses, build according to this pattern. I, 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 even though you're in the desert place there's a particular way that you have to do things even though you're going through something there's still a particular way that you have to do something you can't switch gears because things get hard you can't change the pattern because things don't look like the way you expect it to be outcome you gotta stick to the pattern because it's the pattern come on y'all I hear me that give purpose to the to the culture tell your neighbor build according to the pattern oh God is a God is a master artist and sometimes I don't get it you know God show you how to set up your business God show you how to structure things and and because of of influence and people and things that come to let you switch up the pattern and God says, I can't work with that pattern because that's not the one I gave you that's not in my message that's for somebody right there i don't know I'm, I'm i'm preaching prophetically right now somebody ought to hear what what i'm saying right now what i'm trying to say the picture i'm trying to paint is that you can't let people mess with your purpose um, uh, I, I, I'm just prophesying to somebody that that's not in my message I'm just trying to encourage you that you got to listen to the right people you got to listen to the right voice you can't you can't allow any and anybody to speak oh my god you got it you got to say you can't even come in the cockpit this is not even a place for second opinion come y'all not hear me this is not the place for your opinion here in particular there's a place that we got to go and if we don't get there call oh, shut up my son Somebody ought to give God praise in this church. Oh, look at this. Stick to the pattern. There is a picture in it. There's a picture in the pattern. Say there's a there's a picture in the pattern. If you look good enough, you'll see where God is trying to take you. Look for the pattern. Look at the bigger picture. Oh, y'all hear me? Don't look. Don't get caught up in the minor stuff, the minute stuff, the stuff that is set there to to make you grow up into what you're into your purpose. The, the thing that are set there, God put it there to make you realize and remind you of oh, some things that you need to mature in you see you see sometimes we get tripped up because we're not pliable to change uh, I mean, you know, you know uh, if, the, if the pilot tells you he had to change several routes to get you to where you need to go you are going to have a problem because we're not pliable to change that's why the pilot can't come and tell you I gotta change radar this I gotta change this I gotta go down 6,000 feet come on I gotta go up another 5,000 to get over the storm my God almighty all, all the announcement come and say there is going to be a little turbulence just sit in your seat if you weren't buckled before 
therefore buckle down put your seat below because there's gonna be not much but there's gonna be a little turbulence and all you gotta do is say yeah I know it's coming I brace myself for a little turbulence I don't know who I'm talking to this morning but it could have been worse it could have been worse it could have been worse you could have been through a whole lot more but the pilot know how to oh shit cut up asunder know how to shift gear in the radar in the cockpit Ah, uh, somebody ought to give God praise. And this is why Jesus, uh, the woman, the old cheddar woman, the way of thinking before her, uh, the woman at the well, that she said, Je Jesus, listen, uh, before you came here uh, to talk about this new stuff, uh, there's a way that we used to do it. Uh, used to do it in my old church, used to do it uh, back in the days of Moses, used to do it according to the law. But Jesus said the time was always coming. Oh, shut up, and now is come on, y'all not hear what I'm saying. I know you, 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 they told you that worship should only be in Jerusalem. I know you only worship upon this mountain, but the time has been coming, and now is the time where the true worshipers worship in spirit and in truth. There's no well, somebody ought to give God glory in this place. Uh, somebody give him glory uh, and, and so God uh, you, you can't be resistant to change culture require change sometimes uh, required to say God I'm putting it in your hands uh, I know that's how we did it for nine years in open fire that's how we've always do it uh, pastor why are you changing now why are you coming to all this new stuff uh, come on y'all not hear what I'm saying uh, but God is saying to get to the next place we have to change the We gotta change the route sometimes. I, I can't even tell you what I'm doing because guess what? All you gotta do is trust me. All you gotta know that I'm faithful. That if I leave from El Paso, I'm gonna end up in Killeen. If I leave from El Paso, I'm gonna end up in Austin. Oh, give God glory in this place. Oh, I feel the Holy Ghost. Oh, I, I, did, I didn't get no sleep last night, Uncle Bruce, though. But I know that God always helps me when I come on this pulpit. Somebody give God glory in this place. Did the neighbor stick to the pattern? I, I didn't come to preach this morning. I came to just talk to y'all, but something is disturbing my spirit. Oh, in, in a good way. Oh, yes, yes. Tell the tell neighbor, is stick to the pattern. Oh. There's a bigger picture. There's a bigger picture. We're not doing stuff just because. There's a bigger picture. Uh, we're not coming here and just saying we're trying to preach a good sermon and to show you how eloquent we can speak and and go through these these rituals when I said that it comes a time in your Christian life where those things do nothing for you therefore you will not do nothing for anybody else and therefore you go oh, yeah I hear what I'm saying this morning and so and so it's not just because it's not just because it's a picture a big picture with a pattern and so culture 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 is so important that not even with a vision a, a, a toxic a culture can mess up the vision Because if you have some, if you have toxic people murmuring, complaining, gossiping, backstabbing, oh God Almighty, uh, I, I'm, try, I'm trying to walk a little light easy this morning. I'm, I'm, not, I'm not here to beat nobody up, I'm just here to, to help somebody. Oh my God Almighty, uh, that, that when, 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 you, when you find toxic people, you gotta say, listen, you that ain't gonna take us nowhere. Oh, that, 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 that is not going to take us anywhere. I know you have a point. It's a valid point, but it's toxic. And if it's toxic, we can be in the same plane. Y'all not hear what I'm saying. And, 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 and you're not. You see, sometimes people, we, we miss it, man of God. Miss it, miss it. Because if I tear down something that I'm in, 
I don't realize that I'm tearing down my own transportation. Toxicity will make you self-destructive. When you gossip, <laughs> you see, you're talking about somebody, but God is saying you're a gossiper. I, 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 you know, it might not seem like a big deal because it feels good. It's bringing you gratification. So in that moment, it's almost like you're doing yourself a favor. Because I'm better than them. They're not in my class. So you feel good for that moment. But don't you know that's the recipe? Come on, y'all not hear me. That's the recipe for self-destruction. There's a pattern to life. And there's a pattern to death. Don't think, don't, don't think the devil don't have some patterns as well. Because he know how things is, should, is going to turn out if you continue with this pattern. If you continue to drink, drunk, and all, all the stuff. He said there's a pattern there. I don't have to do no more because the process is all started. And if, if that pattern, if that picture. You see the... You, you see the uh, <laughs> you, you, you see the enemy has studied us, studied us so long if you have a self destructive pattern he ain't gonna even bother with you he gonna, he, it's not necessary for him to intervene because you are ready Oh God Almighty! No. And, and, and then, and then the psychic, the psychic will, will come and say, "Listen, I can read your future because you're already showing the pattern. All he's doing is telling what you're already doing." There's a pattern to life and there's a pattern to death. Oh, I know I'm preaching good this morning. Oh, somebody give God glory in this place. Oh, oh God. Oh, oh. And, and so toxic, toxic culture. <laughs> oh, I ain't got, that's none of this in my notes, y'all. You know, I know that. I don't know. Look at him and say, it's the pattern. Come on, it's the pattern. It's not the devil, it's the pattern. Come on, it's called self-destruction. Yeah. Uh, you can tell when somebody is on, on their self-destructive path because of the pattern. Without, without the right culture, the vision, again, I said, it's just a good idea. It's a great idea, Pastor. Sounds good. I think we can do that. But the culture is stronger than the strongest vision. So now y'all see why we're here today and for the next few weeks why we're here. Because we can dream all day long and hang out with the wrong people. You ain't going to get to where you're dreaming about. I'm trying to break it down so y'all can, can see why I'm preaching about culture and vision. Because, because you're going, you're going, you, you know that you're supposed to be this and be that. But here is a toxic culture telling you you can't. Here is somebody telling you where you're going to get the money from. How you're going to get there. What you're going to do. 
I see many of your kind before tried this, tried that, and failed. But God told you to trust me. God told you that I'm faithful. God told you that He's faithful. God told you, but 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 because of toxic culture. Within, I'm going to finish here. Gonna, we we got to catch up at 11, 11 o'clock. I told y'all I ain't going to preach long. I'm not going to violate myself this morning. Y'all win. Go, Pastor. Go. In three minutes, you'll be like, man, Pastor, you over time. <laughs> I just caught y'all. I just caught y'all three minutes early. But I'm going to drop this here. We're going to continue at 11 o'clock. Culture. And I got to say this to get into segue into what we're, it's your values, your beliefs, your attitude, your purpose, your habits, your behavior, your norms, your tone, how you talk to people. Around here, we have a nice tone, how we deal with people. We're gentle, we're kind, we're loving, we're patient. Ah, your tone. You don't have to be ugly about it. I w I'm not used to people being ugly about it. I'm willing and able, but because of the toxicity. It's what you do it is why we do and it's the way we do it's what why and how it is it is in a small portion the protocols I say protocols. I'm going to give you the definition of this and we're going to, going to get out of here. Be back at 11 o'clock and we'll finish. Because I, I want to take a vital component of the culture which is the, which is the protocol and show us how protocol is important and relevant to the culture. Because if you, Pastor Blunt, decide to do what you want to do, in other words, there's an acceptable way. Our culture is already an established way, which is the protocol of how we do things around here. It, it, it is a procedure of how we behave. It's the system, the rules that governs this body. Certain rules that govern over there is not the same rules that governs over here. Of course, we all know that the same word of God governs there. The same word of God governs here. I'm talking about practical things. The culture. It's the acceptable. Come on, stand on your feet, everybody. It's the acceptable. That means it's not an opinion thing. It's the acceptable. The protocol how we do things around here 